Okay. So these uh, these past few weeks of uh, you know last week was pretty intense. This week is going to be pretty intense. Uh, next week again a little bit intense. But at least we're repeating over and over some of the different things we're doing. Okay. So last week we had covered ordinary simple annuities and ordinary general annuities. And just to touch base, can somebody tell me what's the what does the ordinary mean? When is the payment of that regular payment? If I'm making monthly payments, is it the beginning of the month or the end of the month? It's the end. Okay, I, I couldn't hear you, Rita, but I read your lips. <laughs> so absolutely right. It's at the end of the month. Okay, so today what we're going to do is that instead of having things at the end of the month, we're going to put them at the beginning. And that's where the formula changes. And that's why I brought up that PowerPoint. If we have, we see here, these are the ordinary ones where the payments are at the end. These ones down here are when the payments at the beginning of the period. And the financial term for an annuity where we have a regular payment at the beginning of the period is called an annuity due. Okay. So the due statement says, I need it right now. Okay, you can't wait a month. I got to get it right now. So we're going to be working with this formula. Um, I'll be jumping into Excel and showing you the functions in Excel that will help us do this. And I'll also show you how to maybe work with this with um, longhand in Excel. Now in Canvas, I do have the video lesson for this. So there's our annuity due, simple in general, with interest and lease examples also. And then I have also an annuities lesson on calculating payments. So we're just going to do extra questions today that I'm taking from the textbook. That way you have more, more, more examples, walking them through and trying to develop them. So the first thing, first one I'm going to look at is, okay, where's my book gone? There it is over there. Okay. And oops, up here. And I want to try and blow this up because it's way too tiny. There we go. That's much better. And I want to take a look at question number nine. Okay. Hang on, we got somebody else coming in here. There we go. They're joining. So in question number nine, we have Armina, and Armina is depositing $25,000 into a savings account and the saving account yields and yielding means it's just another word for it's earning the interest at three and a half percent compounded semi-annually. In addition, she plans to deposit a thousand dollars at the beginning of every three months for 10 years into this account and we want to determine the total amount she'll have at the end of 10 years and how much interest she's actually earned. So can somebody, before we start doing things and before I switch to the camera where we'll do it longhand, can you tell me what two things are happening in this question? We've got a $25,000 amount and then we've got deposits of $1,000. So what two things are going on? And you can put it in the chat, you can unmute yourself and just talk. Well, what is a deposit? A deposit of $1,000 at the beginning of every three months, that's a regular payment. It's a regular deposit. So that's an annuity. Okay. Sorry, say that louder, Santiago. Oh, come back. Sorry, I'm, I'm mute for accident. Oh, oh you, were, you were answering me, but yeah, I couldn't hear you. What okay. you say and check my, my note to, oh, okay. try to stay in the same way. Sorry, but- uh, No, no, I, no worries. Okay. All right. So what we have here, I'm going to do this in annotation so we can see it on the screen. And I'm going to do it in text so it won't look horrible here. So we have the 25,000 is a lump sum. And going into the future, how is that going to go into the future? as compound interest, okay? So that's an easy part of this question. And we'll move that maybe up here, okay? Oops, wait a minute, that's not nice. 
Uh, I guess I'll have to move it. Hang on a second. Oh, it's not letting me do this. Oh, there we go. Select. I'll put it over here so we can actually read it. <laughs> okay. I always forget annotating is on top of what we're doing. Okay. Now the thousand dollars, let's do a text for that. So the thousand is an annuity. And because it says beginning means due. Okay. What's another thing maybe we have to look at for the annuity? Okay, so we know it's due, we know the payments are at the beginning, so that's going to dictate what formula we're going to use, whether present value or future value. But remember, we had two types or uh, two main categories of annuities and then two subcategories. So we had ordinary and due, we're in the due side now, and then under due, we have simple and general. And what do we look at for the simple and general? Okay, unmute yourself, Kansiago. <laughs> He's talking again. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we need to check if the, the payouts is the, the same or are different. Yes, exactly uh, right. So I'm just going to underline here. We have compounding is semi-annually. And then we have payments or deposits at the beginning of every three months. So that's quarterly. So quarterly and semi-annually no they match. don't match so we have a general case yeah. okay yeah. so yeah. so just trying to walk you through the process that you know this is the types of things we have to look at we have to analyze what kind of money do we have do we have a lump sum lump sums are not so bad to deal with so that's nice but if we have annuities then we have to figure out what kind of an annuity ordinary or or do so beginning uh, end of the period or beginning of the period and then also is it simple or general simple the compounding period matches the payment period general compounding period does not match the payment period okay so you're i think um this is part of the challenge of last week this week and next week is that we really really have to stop and think a lot more any clarifications needed before we go on? Okay, I'm gonna take a picture of that screen so that then I can post it up into um, Canvas after. And what we're gonna do now is go, we're gonna move over to the camera and we're gonna set everything up. Okay, before I do that, because a few people are still writing, so I'll just give you a couple seconds to finish there. <clears throat> okay, hang on. Let me think. I think the student is emailing me. Nope, somebody else. Okay. Alrighty. So I'm going to switch over to my camera so that we can see everything. Oops, I got to get rid of my annotation stuff here. So I'm going to clear all my drawings there and I'm going to get rid of annotate because we're just going to write here. <clears throat> so again, this is for reference section 10.5 of the textbook and it's on page 479. So if you're looking for it and it's question number nine, okay, just so we have a good reference. And we have our timeline here. We have today, we have our lump sum of $25,000. We have a 10 year term, <coughs> excuse me. We have our nominal rate, J2 is 3.5%. We have regular payments. They're also here at today's. So we're paying $1,000 and that was per quarter, was every three months. And these were at the beginning, okay? So the diagram, my timeline, I'm doing the same type of thing I sort of did in words when we're looking at the problem. Now we want to know what is the future value. So our future value total 
is unknown and how much interest did we actually earn? So these are the two things that we're trying to calculate. Okay. All right. We know that the um, <clears throat> simple int the compound interest one, this one here, that's just going to go forward via compound interest. So I'm going to call that future value of my twenty five thousand dollars. That's unknown. Now these regular payments, because we're ma making the payments at the beginning, my last payment, I'm just going to show it down here, just so that we can understand. Remember, it's at the beginning of the period. So this would be the last quarter. Okay. And this is our series of payments. And we want to know what's the future value of those thousand dollar due payments. Okay, so those are the two things we're looking for. Now we had already done this. We said beginning means due. And then let's see if I can use a different color here. I wonder if orange will show up. <clears throat> and we said that quarterly and semi-annually. Is that showing up? Okay. Oh, that's not showing up well at all. <laughs> Let's use a different color here. There's my black. There we go. We'll do black. So we have quarterly and semi-annually. They don't match, which means general. Okay. And remember, general means we have an extra step we have to do. Okay. Everybody with me so far? So here I have a general annuity due. And I'm just writing these things down to remind myself what's going on. Okay. Somebody else waiting to come in here. Hang on, let me let them in. There we go. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> Let's deal with the compound interest first. Okay. So for the future value of the 25,000, we know that our I is going to be 0.035 divided by two. And if we do that, that's 0.0175 per semi-annual period. And our number of semi-annual periods is gonna be 10 years times two semi-annuals per year or 20 semi-annuals. I'm doing it down here this time because other, if I try and squeeze it in up here, it's gonna make the diagram look really, really messy, okay? And I'm just gonna push that up a little bit so we can see a bit more. So our future value of our 25,000 is equal to the 25,000. Our formula is just one plus I to the N. So there's our 0 0.035 and our N is 20, okay? And we'll, we'll calculate that in just a couple of minutes, okay? I just wanna stop there for a second and touch base with everybody. Okay. Let's take a look now at our general annuity due. And this time I'll do it on the actual line here to save a bit of space. So we know that our I is going to be some value, we don't know what it is, per quarter, okay? Because we have quarterly payments, we need our I per quarter. And we know our N is going to equal to the 10 years times four quarters per year. So N is equal to 40 quarters. So we have to sort this out and we have our N for our annuity due, no problem. So our future value of our thousand dollars due is gonna to equal to our payment, okay? I'm just gonna write the formula out so that we get more familiar with it. One plus I to our N minus one over I 
times the one plus i. Okay, so the do requires this extra term. Okay, but we have to sort out our i per quarter. So recall that the general means that we have to figure out this i. So we could maybe circle that and say that's what we're going to have to sort out. So our i calculation, remember, is one plus the given periodic rate. 0.035 divided by 2 raised to the 2 over 4 minus 1. Okay. And if we calculate that out, give you a couple of seconds. How about you try calculating that on your calculators or Excel, however you like to do it. See what you can get. and maybe just uh, three or four decimal places, but don't round, okay? And on your calculators, keep all the decimals. And if somebody has a, the number for it, you can put it in the chat or just unmute yourself and call it out. No volunteers? Okay. Well, I got 0 0.00871 with all the decimals, and that's per quarter. Okay. So now I have the quarterly rate and the number of quarters. Now I can use my ugly formula. Okay. So again, we'll push it up a little bit so we can just see more calculations here. So our future value of the thousand dollars due is equal to my payment, 1,000, one plus the 008. I'm just gonna show the 008 for lack of space here. Um, that's being raised to the 40th. I'll subtract one divided by the 008 with all the decimals. And I can't forget that little extra term at the end, one plus 0.008 eight and again with all the decimals okay so these are the two things we need to calculate okay. similar to what we did last week we were calculating equivalent interest rates last week we were doing compound interest last week and the week before so we should be a little bit familiar with those but now we have this very ugly formula that we need to deal with, okay? So I'm gonna jump into Excel. I'm gonna see if I can do these two screens at the same time so we can keep the stuff on the this side. And I think because people are a little bit more comfortable going longhand, we'll stick with longhand to start. So I'm just gonna be here. I'm going to create a new sheet. So I'm in a blank sheet. Okay, so this one here, that's not a problem, right? We have our $25,000. We have our 0 0.035. And we have our 20. So if we're looking for the future value, and let me just increase the font size on that so that everybody can see it much better. We'll make it 18. There we go. That's a little bit better. So what we can do is go equals the $25,000 multiply by, we have to open brackets for the one plus our periodic rate. And remember, we have to bring that to an exponent raised to the exponent of 20. And we can just go enter. Oh, and I have the wrong rate here. I saw a couple of people looking at me like, what's she doing there? This should be 0.0175. So this is my um, present value. That's my I, that's my N. Just so I have the right notation there. Oops, I want that in the center. There we go. Okay. 
So here we have, and I'm just going to make that currency. So it looks a little bit better. Okay. And I'll show the formula underneath it. So that people can reproduce it if desired. Okay. Yes, Santiago. Uh, unmute yourself, please. Yes, thank you. In, mm -hmm. in this case, for example, the value of i is around one eight. Is no problem. Okay, here, let me see here. Oh, one seven five. Because my column was a little bit smaller, it made it, uh, it rounded it, but it actually, I'm going to go back here, see how it shows 018, but here up in the formula bar, it shows the actual value. Now, if you really wanted to make it easy, um, make it more functional, you could just make this a formula equals 0.035 divided by 2, and there's, oops, 0.035 divided by 2, and <laughs> I forgot my equal symbol. Equals, there we go. And you have the same value. Okay, so this is, I've, I've calculated my I. Okay, but this is something you can do, especially if you're having, say, some difficulties with your calculator. Try also doing the calculation in Excel. And you might find it, you know, it can confirm your work. Okay. Now, the annuity due is a bit of a bigger problem, right? So we're going to have a payment, we're going to have a I again, and we're going to have an N again. And our payment was the thousand. Okay, maybe I should make that as a currency also. Oops, no, change it to just currency so it shows. Okay. Just so we have dollar amounts here. Okay. All right, so there's the thousand. Now the I here, now I need all the decimals, okay? So this is where this can get a little um, cumbersome, but still we can do it. So we're gonna go equals, open bracket, oh, sorry, open brackets, open brackets. Uh, yeah, I need the, um, we'll start with the one. One plus open brackets again, the 0 0.035 divided by two. Okay, we're going to raise that to a power and the power is two divided by four. And now because I want to subtract all of this from one, this is where I really should have, according to bed mass, brackets around everything and then subtract one. So there's my one plus I, raising it to the power of two over four. So following this formula exactly calculating all of that first, that's the black brackets, and then subtract one from it. And I go equals, and there's my double knot 871821. Okay. And I'll put the I formula text. And we'll go equals. So you can see the formula for that, okay? And then here, our N, we had calculated our N as where was it? It's 40, <clears throat> so I'll just enter my 40. And now our future value of the 1000 annuity due equals, and I'm just going to bring that out a little bit, bring that in a little bit. So now we have to put in this whole ugly thing together, okay? Now, sometimes what I find, and I'm gonna just drag this over so we have a bit more space here. Sometimes I find if people are doing longhand Excel, it's sometimes easier to do every term separately, okay? So there's the $1,000, okay? Here's the one plus I, excuse me, equals one plus I, okay? So that's this term over here. And again, I'm gonna keep all the decimals so everybody can see them. And then in this middle one, I'm gonna do this ugly stuff here. And you may even want to do the numerator and then the denominator separately, okay? 
it seems very convoluted, but once you have it done, you're okay. So I'll do the numerator first. So I'll go equals the one plus our i, and we're raising it to the power 40. And I want all of that. So I'm going to put double brackets just to make sure everything works properly and subtract one from it. And now here I just have that term. Okay. So if I want to do my future formula longhand, I can go equals this. Yeah, okay, Viraj has got me the answer. Um, I, I, you forgot one thing, Viraj, though. It's not 47. You forgot one term. Okay, so we'll see that in a second. So we have that times. Now remember, this has to be a division. So we're going to go, that's the numerator divided by the denominator, and then all times the bottom value. Okay, and it's actually 48024. And if I change that to currency, 49 cents. Okay, so this was the $1,000, the payment. This, the 0.414, is the numerator across the top. This, of course, is just the denominator. And then this one plus the 1.0871 is our last term here because we have an annuity due. So Viraj, that's a very common error that some of us do. We have to remember that because our payments are at the beginning of our period, our formula requires this extra term at the end. Okay. Now I'm going to show you the same thing. So this is longhand. Okay. And again, I appreciate it's, you know, maybe troublesome, but you all have different calculators. So it's sort of hard to show you just on one calculator, but we can also do this as part of annuities and let me go to my sheet that has this here's future value of annuity dues okay and we have a general one so let me come over here to where i have a setup for a general case okay so here's my payments they were a thousand dollars okay here's my payments per year quarterly there's four of them my nominal rate was, what was it again? It was 3.5, okay. The compoundings per year were two. My term in years was 10, okay. And see how I have it automatically calculating the number of compounding periods, 40, matches our 40 here. The periodic rate, 0.017, uh, oh, you know what? I'm in the wrong one here. I need to come over to my general one here. I have the wrong periodic rate formula. So let me just copy this. Okay, there's my 0.0871. Okay, and my present value is zero and there's my future value. And then here, we're just gonna delete that for now because it's not relevant to this question. There's our 4804. And remember, this is our formula it's our future value formula. There's our rate, the periodic rate. There's the number of periods, the number of periods 40. There's our payment. We're making a payment, so it's negative. There's our payment up here. And the functionality in this function in Excel says that if you put one, it means that you're setting it as the beginning of the period payment. Okay. So you have a couple of options in Excel. I'll just go cancel here for now. You can use the future value formula and I'll just put the formula there. And let's bump that up quite a bit. Okay, so there's the future value formula. Or you can do what we did, I gotta find my sheet, and do it sort of step by step in Excel to try to match up your calculator. Um, there's more of you than there are me, <laughs> okay? So you're gonna have to pick which method you prefer, whether you're going to try to use your calculator just by its, itself, or whether you wanna maybe try and design something in Excel to support you and give you more confidence for when you're doing calculations. Okay, so questions on any of that? Yes, Rita. Um. 
can you uh, enlarge the, your writing? I, I just wanted to, I'm not sure if I can see it right, but um, yeah, that, that's one. So the future value of the 25,000, mm -hmm. uh, the one plus I, is this, it's not an DI, it's, it's supposed to be 0 0.0175, or this is the right one? Um, the okay, yeah, this, this is it, 0.0175. Yeah. Okay, I, I think uh, your question is, um, and no, I'm... No, no, no. Sorry, keep going. Uh, what I wanted to ask that um, you wrote the future value of the uh, 25,000. I wrote it in wrong. Thank you. Yeah, I, uh, okay, so that, that's wrong because uh, I had a different uh, Sorry. answer for that one. Yeah, my I was apologies. Why, but okay. My apologies. So that, that's the correct one. Yeah, sorry yeah. about that. No, I, I, I thought that I... I understood now and I totally lost, but it's okay. Okay, no, 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 you're, you're totally fine. I'm trying to talk and walk and do 10 things at a time here. And thank no, you for catching that, okay? Everybody, please make that correction. I do not want to throw you off, okay? All right. These are very, very involved. So let's just continue on. Let's give the answer here. So for the 25,000, we had it coming out to 35369 and I'm going to keep the decimals for now 454 with all the decimals because remember we should only really round at the very end of our calculation our annuity came out to 48000 024 decimal 490 with all the decimals And what did we have to do? We wanted the total future value. So we have to add those two. So I'll make sure I can see this. There we go. So our future value total is equal, just, just add those. And if you add it and round to the nearest cent at the very end, you'll get 83,393 and what is it, 95 cents. And I can just add the two values I got in Excel also and get the same value. Okay. So lots of moving parts, okay? Because this is how sort of the real world works. This is how money and finance works, okay? All right, the second part of the question was to calculate the interest, okay? So for the interest, can somebody tell me for the $25,000, this is what it's equal to in the future, how much interest did I earn on that $25,000 investment? Can somebody tell me how I'd calculate that? I've got $100 today, 10 years from now, I've got $700. How much interest did I earn on my $100 today? Ten, three, sixty-nine, forty-five. exactly right. You just had to subtract them. Okay, so good thinking. So we've, we want to look at the interest we're going to have for the $25,000. It's just the 35, 369, 454 with the decimals minus the 25. Okay, so that's the interest earned on the um, $25,000 lump sum. And Rita, let's make sure I can, this is seen up here. Rita calculated that out for us, 10, 369. And with a number of decimals, four, five, four. And we'll keep all the decimals. And then for the annuity, well, this is what it's equal to in the future. So we're going to have the same type of calculation. But what are we going to subtract from that? 
when we made a thousand dollar payments every quarter, we did it for 10 years. So what's the total amount we paid? 40 payments times a thousand dollars per payment. Okay. So that's the total we put in. And if we figure that out, if we do that calculation, this winds up being $8,024 and 49 with a bunch of decimals in cents. So then our overall interest is just add those two. So the total interest that this person earned comes out to 18,393 and rounded to the nearest cent, 95 cents. there so you can read it a bit better okay so again pulling in some other calculations we've done previously how much interest did I pay how much interest did I earn okay questions I see some faces with a hmm I'm not sure on it <laughs> yeah thank you Rita for for giving us the, the all the decimals 49019 we'll put that in here sort of makes sense. Okay. All right. Let's try something a, a little simpler. Okay. We've done a hard one now. So let's go a little bit easier. And then we'll let the next three are a little bit easier, I think, for us. And they bring in again, the idea of the annuity due aspect. So I'm just going to come to the textbook so you can see where exactly I'm getting this from. Okay, and our next one is again from section 10.5. And we're gonna take a look at number 17. So let's blow that up a little bit again. There we go. You should be able to, oops, that's a little too much. Can't read it all. Hang on, let me put it over this way. There we go, now you can see everything, okay? So I'll get a new piece of paper. You guys start reading. Let's go over the same idea we did before. What's going on? Do we have a lump sum? Do we have uh, an annuity? If we have an annuity, what kind, ordinary or, or do? And again, general or simple. So we're looking at number 17. Now there's maybe a new acronym for some of us here, RRSP. We should know that in North America or Canada, that's a registered retirement savings plan. So I'm planning for retiring. I'm putting money away all the time into an RRIF, registered retirement income fund. Okay. When you retire, when you reach a certain age in Canada, your RRSP has to convert into what we call an income fund, meaning that now you're going to be taking money out as opposed to being put in. Okay. So he converted his RRSP that earned 5.5% compounded daily into the RIF. What was in the RRSP to enable him to receive $3,000 at the beginning of every month for 10 years. So you should be seeing that we're going to be receiving money at the beginning of every month. So that's a regular payment. So that's an annuity. So let's maybe add some annotation here. So we have that all together. Okay. And is it an ordinary annuity or a annuity due? Well, because it's beginning, beginning of every month. Here we have, come back here. It's due. Okay. And then we have compounding daily. So let's maybe use a different color there. So five pound, 5% 5 compounded daily, but monthly payments they don't match. 
So again, we have general. Okay. And this time around, we're pulling out this money because now it goes from an RSP into a RIF. Okay. So that makes this, um, we want to figure out how much money that Miguel had in his RRSP after or when he started to make withdrawals. Okay, and we'll save that and I'll post that on uh, Canvas also. All right, let's clear this, clear all drawings. Let's go back to our camera, get a bit of annotation, and let's set this one up. And this one's a little bit easier than the last one. So again, this is section 10.5 of the text. We're on page 480. So if you're looking it up and it's number 17. Okay. <clears throat> so there's our timeline. So today we want to know how much money did Miguel have today if he was going to be able to withdraw $3,000 per month at the beginning, so BGN for beginning of every period, and if he was planning on doing this for 10 years. Let's put in our last payment just so that we're familiar that beginning or annuity dues start today and end at the beginning of the last payment period. We had a daily compounding rate, so J365, that's the first time we've seen this. It does happen, not very often, but it does occur. And we want to know what is this amount. So we need to take this series of payments and bring them back to our focal date So remember, this is our focal date. In case we forgot that term, we need to bring it back to today. And just to review, this means do. This and this don't match. which means general, okay? So we're gonna need an I is equal to something per month. And we have our N is 10 years times 12 months per year. Our N is 120 months. We should be familiar and very comfortable by now in calculating our equivalent rate. So our I is going to be one plus the 0 0.055 divided by 365. All of that raised to the power 365 divided by, and we want it monthly, so 12, and then subtract one from all of that. There we go, we can still see that. That's a one there. And if we try that calculation, we should get 0, 0, 0049 with all the decimals per month. And we can see that here, the units match per month and monthly payments. Okay, so that's a five there. I'll stop for a second, let you catch up with writing, or if you're trying the calculation, try the calculation out. And just to remind yourselves, it's very good to always have um, different things to, you know, sort of pop out at you. This is a general annuity due so that we use the correct formula. Okay, 
push it up a little bit so we can still see most of it. So we want to know what was the present value of that annuity due. And the formula for an annuity due calculation is equal to the payment. And this is now 1 minus the 1 plus i to the negative n all over i. And because it's due, we need that extra term at the end. Okay. okay. So don't forget that very common error. We can plug everything in now. Make sure you can still see this. So there's our 3000. 1 minus 1 plus the double knot 49 with all the decimals. Our n is 120, so negative 120. Okay. And give that a try for a calculation. See if you can try it all by yourself with whatever calculator you have with Excel or what other calculator you're working with. This is a tough calculation, so I do want you to give it a try. I'm going to show some intermediate calculations if you want to try to check your work. Now, you're not, well, we're not doing this in paper anyway, so you're not required to show these intermediate answers. I'm just trying to support you a little bit with whatever calculator or uh, whatever software, either an online calculator or Excel that you're using. Oh, perfect, Rita, you got it, no problem. To sort of give you some intermediate answers so that we can check. So I want to just touch base for a second. Um, those of you who were able to try the actual number crunching, I know Rita got it. Uh, how many other people? You can just put a little check mark in the uh, participant list. Uh, were you able to get the 277,000? 
All right, I'm going to show it in Excel then. Again, I'm going to make that smaller and jump to Excel. And we're going to do the present value of a general annuity due. And I guess I'll use this one here. So our payments were, or our withdrawals were 3,000. We were making monthly payments. So we had 12 payments per year. Our nominal rate for this particular case was 5.5. That was a 365 rate. We were doing this for how many years? 10 years. So the number of compounding periods. So that's going to be our 10 years times the payments per year. So that's our 120 like we got before. Now we do need our equivalent interest rate. So just for ease of reference, I'm going to copy that over here. And we get our there's our double not. No, I must have done something wrong here. I'll have to do it. Yeah, it should be the double not four nine. So I'll have to do it again. So four five nine. It's zero. Oh, I missed the five when I was writing it. Yes, it is point oh four five nine. Ah, oh, geez, again, I can't walk and talk today. So this should be point O, and I did write, even write it down, double O four five nine. Thank you. Thank you very much for catching that. Cause that's something that would cause errors. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Point double O four five nine. Okay. But the actual answers are okay here. So let me do that again. So control C, my formula is correct. So there's my formula. I'm gonna increase the decimals just so that we have more. And we wanted the present value in this particular case. So equals present value. I'm gonna bring up the formula. I'll put it to the side here. Our rate is this periodic rate. Our number of periods is the 120. Our payment is the 3000. Our future value is zero. And our type here, we want beginning. So we have one and we should go okay. And there's our 277.545, okay? So there's gonna be sort of um, a little bit of pain and a little bit of uh, happiness, shall we say, if you, do things longhand, you know, you're going to have some pain and, you know, maybe having to write things out longhand like I've done here. Um, if you're using Excel, you're going to have a little bit of pain for actually setting up yourself a template in Excel to make it a little easier for you. But then afterwards, especially with Excel, it'll be a lot faster to do your calculations. Okay. So uh, you're going to have to make that personal choice because uh, I'm not dictating to you, you know, what calculator you use or what uh, online calculator or even using or not using Excel. It's totally up to you, okay, just because of the certain environment that we're in. But let's go back to the actual question here. Any clarifications needed on that other than uh, Santiago fixing my <laughs> interest rate, which I totally thank you for. <laughs> Okay, well, let's do something else then. And I'm gonna just bring up the formulas for a second because while technically it's not part of our curriculum, it sort of is embedded in our curriculum where we have um, for loans and mortgages next week, we're going to have to be able to calculate both the payment amount and our N. Now the payment amount, regardless of whether we have ordinary annuities or annuity dues, is actually not too bad. Because now instead of having the future value or present values unknown, we'll have the payment is unknown. 
So in the video lesson I just showed you, we'll just plug in your numbers as you know them. You'll have this, you'll have the I, you'll have the N. So you'll be able to calculate all this ugly stuff here. But once you get a number for that, you can just divide each side by it and get your payment. Okay. Now when it comes to N, that one's a little nastier. Um, so that's going to be our very last question. We're going to do a payment question first and then we'll move on to an N question. Okay, so let's do the nice one first. So let's go back into my book and I want to be in 10.6 for this one. So just give it a second to come up here and we want to be on page 486. And I want to look at number nine. I went a little too far. Okay, and we'll blow that up. And we're looking at number nine. So I'll get a new piece of paper while you guys read. And we have here, so that Simone's retirement fund has an accumulated value of 45,000. So the first thing before we even sort of continue reading, somebody tell me what that 45,000 is. Is it a future value or is it a present value? Future, perfect, because it has accumulated, okay? So this is a future value, okay? If it has been earning 5% compounded semi-annually, what's the size or calculate the size of the payment she deposited at the beginning of each month in this fund for the past 20 years? So here we have, that is an unknown payment. So that's what we're looking at. We're looking at to calculate. Okay. And then if we want to take a look at the other different things that we're sorting out. So the payments are at the beginning of every month and we're earning 5% compounded semi-annually. So what kind of an annuity do we have? Is it an ordinary annuity or an annuity due? Due, yep. So it's an annuity due, i.e. beginning payments, oops, payments with an S, okay. And then is it simple or general? Well, we have semi-annual compounding and monthly payments. So we have General. General. Okay. So once again, just sort of outlining exactly what we have. Okay. And again, I'll take a picture of that so I can post it in Canvas after. Okay. Everybody understand sort of what's going on? So now we have an unknown payment. And this is very typical. Uh, when we, we see loans and mortgages, you know, that's going to be one of the things we will want to know. Okay, my house is worth half a million dollars. That's the one I want to buy. Or by today's standard, it's more like a well, million dollars if you're living in Toronto. Uh, what's the monthly payment going to be? Okay, so typically we will want to be able to calculate this. So I'm going to clear all my drawings. We're going to come back to our camera and we're going to set this problem up. So again, let's make sure that we can see everything here. So this is 10.6 of our textbook. Okay, we're on page 486 and we're doing question number nine. And we have a situation here where here is today. We wanna know what is our payment is unknown and it's an unknown amount per month and it's at the beginning, okay? We're doing this for 20 years, okay? And we know that, um, let me come back to the question just for a second here, okay? We know that our fund had accumulating to $45,000, okay? So we know here, there's our 45,000 which was our future value, okay? And you could even put in 
future value to help yourself. Because we have beginning of month payments, our last payment, let's put it over here. Okay, so that's the beginning of the last month. So here's our annuity. We have our compounding rate. It was semi-annual, 5%. So as before, we said beginning means due. And then we also said the monthly and the semi-annual don't match implies general. Okay, so just capturing all our thought process. Okay. So what we have here, just to refresh our memory, we have a general annuity due. And now we need to bring that where? Well, the only dollar amount we have is the future value, the 45,000. So we have to bring our series of payments into the future. And we know that it's going to equal this. Okay. So here we're going to need our I is some unknown, unknown rate per month. And we have our N is 20 years times 12 months per year. Our N is 240 months, okay? So again, because of general case, we have to calculate our I. Okay, thank you Anmol for putting the, uh, the answers in the, um, the chat for the do and the general. Good pickup. Here, let's sort out our I. So our I is going to be 1 plus the 0 0.05 divided by 2 raised to the power 2 over 12 and subtract 1. If we calculate that out, and maybe I'll throw the calculator in here. So there's my calculator. So there's my 0 0.05 divided by 2 plus one, raising it to the power two divided by 12, subtract one, and we get double knot four, one, two, three, etc. And again, that would be per month. Okay. So now we have that. And again, we can stop and check these match. Okay, so we're good to go. Any questions so far at all? Okay, all right, I'll just push it up a little bit more. So we're going to use our future, future value of an annuity due. And that's a payment. And because it's annuity due, we have this big long term. And we have the extra little term on the side. Okay. And this is what we're trying to calculate. The payment is unknown. So we'll plug in our values. Our N was 240. Okay, and we're going to calculate all of what that's equal to first. Okay, so I'm just going to transcribe my 45,000. And we're going to try and figure out what that number is. Okay. So I'd like you to give that a try and also try, I'll do it at the same time. Now, do you want me to show intermediate answers or just the final answer for that? Okay, all right.
So all of this here reduces to this one number 410. Now, for those of you who have this calculator, I'll include the calculation as part of it. Let's see if I can, yeah, we can see everything here. So I have my periodic rate stored in location one. So I'm gonna do the numerator first, one plus, recall that number. So this is the one plus double not four, raised to the 240, so y to the x, 240. I get an answer. Professor? Yes? Sorry, but in when you put in the in the sheet the, the number of i, it's the same problem in the other x, there is 4, 1, 2, no 4, 2. I'm getting dyslexic in my old age. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> 4, 1, 2. Yeah, 4, 1, 2, 3, 9. Here, yeah. I'll, re I'll rewrite it. 0. 0.004123 and so on. Thank you, Santiago. You're keeping me honest. <laughs> okay, let me let me go back to. No, thank you, my pleasure. Up. I really learned this. Uh, and you know what? This is the thing. And and I told you a couple of weeks ago it would be very frustrating, but eventually it's going to click. Okay. I change every day for 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 the calculator to know the decimal to yep. the step by step is really, really longer. Yes. But I- It gets it in the brain. Full adaptation for different details and, and thank you for this. I, I oh, you're it. welcome. Okay, so I'm gonna go one plus recall one to get in the brackets, raise it to the power. So y to the x, 240. Now this is raised to the power subtract one from that, divide by our rate, and now multiply that by one plus recall one, and there's how we get the 410.29, okay? And now to do the last part, I'm just gonna store that answer in number two. So to get our payment, I just wanna make sure we can still see this. We just now have to divide that. So now I can go the 45,000, divide by my recall two, and I get 109.677, so rounded to two decimal places. Let's keep the decimal places first and then I'll round it. One oh nine. Sixty-eight. Okay. So again, pretty, pretty complicated as far as having to deal with all this stuff here. But again, if you slow yourself down with whatever calculator you're using, you could be okay. Questions on this one at all? The idea is very simple. We have one, two, three, four variables. As long as we know three of them, we can calculate the unknown fourth. Okay. And when we're doing loans and mortgages, it's going to be important for us to be able to calculate payments. So this is going to be a, an important thing for us. All right. Well, the last thing I wanted to cover today, and again, because this is a, a lead in to our um, loans and mortgages topic next week, is that we should be able to start, we should be starting to get a little bit comfortable with looking at when N is unknown. Now, if you thought these formulas were bad, most of you will go, oh my heavens, these ends here, holy Hannah. These ends down here, even worse. They're basically rearrangements. These four equations are rearrangements of 102A, 102B, 104A, and 104B. So at least thankfully we're not responsible for the rearranging, right? But you'll also be happy to know that you can use Excel to do this. So today I'm going to do it longhand 
And then next class, I'll do another end calculation using Excel and we'll do the loans and the mortgages. So here you can see that, let's take a look at this one here. Which one am I gonna use? I'm gonna use the future value for just the ordinary annuity. So we're gonna use this one here. So I'm gonna know my periodic rate. I'm gonna know my future value. I'm gonna know my payment. Now this, what looks like an N is actually the lawn function, the natural logarithm. So on my Texas BA2 plus calculator, it's this key here. Oops, helps if I put my camera on. It's this key right here, the LN key. Okay, and on other calculators, you should have the same type of thing. If you're using an online calculator, you're going to need to use a scientific calculator that has this key on it. Okay, conversely, we can use Excel. All right, and we'll cover that next week. So what we're going to do is take a look at, again, another question from our book. And this one is going to be from section 10.7. So wait a minute, I'm in the wrong spot here. There we go. So I want to go to 10.7. And we're going to go to page 492. And we just want to look at question number three. And we'll blow that up. And that'll work. So question number three here, the Bridget question. <clears throat> so once again, Bridget has been depositing $400 at the end of every month. So let's maybe throw some annotation on this. Let's do some straight lines. So 400 at the end of every month into a savings account with a goal of accumulating $25,000 and her account earns 4% compounded monthly. And here we have, what are we gonna wanna calculate? How many deposits will she have to make? Okay, so again, if we walk through here, we can say end equals ordinary. Okay, so that's what that's telling us. Let me just move it up a little bit here. Okay, we have accumulating 25,000. So that means the 25,000 is a future value. Okay, so that's the 25,000 future value. We have monthly compounding and monthly payment compounding, or monthly payment periods. So those match. So then we also have, let's maybe squeeze it down here. Simple. Just move that. Oh, it fits nicely. Okay. So simple because monthly payments and monthly compounding, they match. So what are we looking for? And let's maybe put this in black. N is unknown. Okay. So again, just breaking down the question to sort this out. Now, I know in, in previous years when I've taught this subject, uh, when we had, say, paper exams or paper assignments, I highly recommended people using highlighters, uh, colored pencils or pens to circle things and highlight things and write yourself notes as you're reading. Because this is a big part of the communication side of this course where you have to understand the different scenarios. So let's take a look at what we would do. We'll set up the exact same type things we we're doing before with the timeline, etc. And let's solve now for an unknown n. So again, I'll save this screen that's marked up. And we'll post that in Canvas after class. I'm going to clear all my drawings, get rid of annotation, and come back to my camera. So this time we're in section 10.7 of the text. 
We're on page 492 and we're doing question number three. And N is our unknown quantity that we're looking for. Setting up our timeline, we have zero. We don't know what the time period is. So that's our question mark. We do have a monthly compound or monthly nominal rate, 4%. And now we have payments, we have $400 per month. And that's at the end. And just to keep consistent, here's our last payment at the end. Again, just so that we're comfortable with the annuity due and the ordinary annuities. We know that <clears throat> we're going to have the 25,000 in the future. So I'm going to put 25,000 down here. And that's the future value. Okay. And we'll say here is our focal date. And because we have the future value, we're going to bring these series of payments into the future. And all those payments will accumulate to $25,000. Now we did say, so let's do this again. End means ordinary. We have monthly and monthly compounding. They match, so it implies simple. So we have an um, ordinary simple annuity. Okay. Again, just reminding ourselves. Because we have simple, we can just do our i is equal to 0 0.04 divided by 12. And 04 divided by 12 will get 0033, and the 3 repeats, and that's going to be per month. And then we have our n is going to be an unknown number of months. Okay. So setting it up, hopefully you're getting a bit more comfortable with this, because we're doing the same types of stuff over and over again. Okay, now ideally, you know, this is what we would have the future value of an ordinary annuity is equal to the payment times the one plus i to the n minus one all over i. And we know the future value, we know the payment, we know the i, but we don't know the n. And it turns out that in order to calculate the n, we are given this formula. It's the ln of 1 plus i times the future value divided by the payment. So all of that times the ln of 1 plus i. Okay. So we're just going to plug in all our information and then we'll switch to the calculator. And again, we're going to do sort of uh, intermediate calculations so that we can all step through it. So I have 1 plus, where is my i? That's my 0, 0, 0033 repeat. My future value is the 25,000. And my payment was 400. So we're going to get the values of what's in the interior numbers here. So this is just the 1.0033 repeat, in the denominator. And in the numerator here, what are we going to get? Bring my calculator. We can just, uh, hang on. I want to be able to see everything. So we're going to push that up, push it to the side a bit. 
grab our calculator. We can't really see that, can we? I'll switch it to the other side. There we go. That's a bit better. Okay. So I'm just going to figure out what's in the what's in here. So I had to get, I need my rate. So there was the 0.04 divided by 12. And I'm going to store that in sorry, and I did it again. I getting so dyslexic on it, but at least I count 0.04 divided by 12, double knot 3, 3. There we go. I'm going to store that in my location one. So there's my interest rate. So I need that times the 25,000. I need to divide it by the payment 400. And I need to add all of this to one. So I get 1.20833 with the repeat. And I'm going to store that answer in number four. The denominator, we call one plus one. And I'm going to store that answer in five. Okay. And then if I want to get the next sequence, let's do the top. So I'm going to recall my four. And I'm going to take the ln of that. And I get 0 0.0.189242 with all the decimals. And I'm going to store that in seven. I'm going to recall my five, which is this number here. Take the ln of it. And that's 0 0.00332779 with all the decimals. And I'm going to store that in eight. And I'm just going to confirm that I have my numbers. There's my 189. There's my double knot three. And I'm going to do that calculation now. So recall seven divided by recall eight. And I get 56.8671 and so on. Okay. And the units there is months. So just walk through the calculation very slowly. So plugging the numbers in, figuring out what all of this is equal to, the 1.20833. This is an easy one, 1. double not 33, and then just using the special lawn key on our calculator. Okay. And then getting the number in the numerator, getting the number in the denominator, and now we have 56 months. And when we're calculating in, what we typically do is round up. Because we don't like to have to calculate partial payments. So we figure we just round this to 57 months. Even if this had been 56, say 0.16 instead of 0.86, we would still round it up. Okay. <coughs> So even though it's a little sort of messy, shall we say, it is still completely doable. And if you, um, <clears throat> as I said, uh, we'll show how to do it in Excel next class. I just want you to, and we'll do another example also next class, so you're a bit more comfortable with it. But I wanted you to at least be exposed to it today. Okay. So as far as video lessons, I for this week, I have the annuity dues, simple and general. I have the payments, okay, again, not too bad, but I'll have a lesson video for the end for up for you guys for this Friday, okay, plus the, the loans and mortgages also up for Friday before class time. Okay. So we sort of started off the class a um, little bit like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, then we got a little bit better and we're now back at the oh my God, oh my God, oh my God situation, right? Okay, but you're getting there. Every little bit helps. Okay, uh, any questions on anything we've done today? The annuity dues or the payment calculations or even this end calculation? All right.
Each of these is really just a little, especially the payment and the end calculations are little steps, little skills. They don't seem little right now, but they are little skills that we need when we're doing loans and mortgages, okay? And one thing just to give you a heads up, uh, when we do cover loans and mortgages next week, we will be using Excel, all right? So please have Excel ready. Um, I'm going to try and have an example done in Excel in the video lesson that you can walk along and try it along the same time as me doing it so that by next Tuesday, you'll have at least done it once, maybe even twice. And then by the time we do it in class together, it'll be a lot easier because one of the things that happens with loans and mortgages is that especially with the payment calculations, we're looking at different um, balances, et cetera, at different points in time and how much interest we paid and how much um, principal we still owe. And those types of calculations can only be done with the uh, full functionality of our Texas BA2 plus calculator or because we're in an online situation on Excel. So we're forced to have to know how to use Excel to a certain degree, okay, at least for that topic. Alrighty, well, I'm going to stop my share here and we'll go back to everybody's nice faces and uh, take a deep breath. <laughs> okay, <laughs> try and enjoy the rest of your day. And if you have any difficulties with anything before Friday, please, you know, reach out to me. And also, uh, as soon as I have the um, videos up for Friday morning, I will be sending an announcement out that they're available in the course uh, course diary has been updated okay but if you have any questions between now and then or even on the weekend always just reach out okay all right go have a coffee or a tea something to make your day a little bit better all right take care guys talk to you soon thank you you're bye. welcome bye-bye have a nice day thank you bye thank bye -bye. you have a good day you too guys and santiago thanks for all the catching you did on me today Oh, we got a message from somebody. That's a bye. bye. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome, guys. <sighs> okay, maybe we'll stop the recording. Okay.